There has been pretty much zero news from Nikola aside from posting about their new hire. What is going on guys? I hope you're having a fantastic day. We have a lot of stuff to talk about. So if you feel like at any point during the video, I earn a like, please go ahead and smash the like button. Go ahead and subscribe if you hadn't already because we are doing a giveaway once we get to 250 subs for an Amazon gift card. So without further ado, let's just jump into the news. So markets are a little bit kind of all over the place this week, as you can kind of expect heading into an election. And now you are continuing to have a lot of these polls come out that that look like Joe Biden is really starting to try to pull away with the election. Uh, you know, we didn't have a presidential debate this past week. Um, so, you know, viewers minds probably aren't changed at all. Uh, you also still have concerns about a vaccine and the coronavirus and you have some European countries starting to shut back down again and take that approach. And, you know, definitely an economic shutdown and another wave of just closing everything down is not going to be good for the economy. A few stocks and a few sectors may do okay, but as a whole, even if, you know, like tech is doing okay, they're not going to just continue to take off like they have been if we have another wave of shutdowns. So uh, that is something to keep your eyes on going forward as we get closer to the election. Stocks will remain volatile. I don't think it's anything to freak out about too, too bad. Uh, and really, you can make your, your decisions after the election, I think. And once you, you understand and know what candidate uh, has been elected and what kind of policies they're going to be setting and so forth. So that is my little spiel on some of the market volatility. And then I want to talk a little bit about Nikola Motors because once again, there has been pretty much zero news from Nikola aside from posting about their new hires. Now, I am super glad that they are excited to show and showcase young talent that maybe they're bringing in. But in a sense, I almost feel bad for these people because it's like, I, I hope they're not getting on board with a company that, that is essentially like going to just tank here in like a year or two. Because I mean, if, if you're working for a company that has shady business practices or you just came out of college and you're super excited and think you're working for an innovative company like, you know, maybe they think they're getting in and working for, you know, Tesla or, or a company like that. But if Nikola Motors doesn't produce and they, they end up being essentially what everyone is kind of accusing them of being, which is just, a, you know, a pump and dump stock. And, you know, they're not really doing anything. They're just, you know, putting the wool over uh, investors eyes. I think I, I just I feel bad for these people. So I wish that they would stop posting about new hires and I wish that they would post actual content and show us the, the things that they're delivering on because we haven't got any of that. Really, Trevor Milton was the person who would, you know, tweet out pictures and all that stuff. And he was probably like way over hyping stuff. So maybe this is their approach is like we don't have anything to share right now. And, uh, you know, a lot of stuff was over promised. So rather than continuing that, we are going to take a step back and only show when we actually have something. And I think that's the case. Like, it seems like they really don't have anything. If you Google or, you know, look on YouTube or anything like that, if you just look and check to see the progress of the plant that they're supposed to be building in Arizona, it looks like they've literally just been moving dirt. Like you could have just brought a hundred kids out there and gave them a little like toy shovel and then just move some dirt around. Like it doesn't really look like they're making progress. Buildings can go up pretty quickly. And from my understanding, they've essentially been kind of moving and grooming dirt now for like several months. And I, I'm not an expert in building and stuff, but I've seen some buildings go up pretty freaking quick. If you just look at how fast somebody can build a house, I mean, you know, a big warehouse or a big manufacturing plant. Yeah, it's, it's in, in, in essence, right? A building is four walls and a roof, right? There's only so much dirt you can move or so much ground you can prep and all this stuff. And I understand that they kind of just got fully approved for their plant maybe like a month ago or something like that. But still, you would expect them to be a lot further along in the building process uh, if, if there was legitimately something that they were, you know, going to be doing. So that kind of just throws up some more red flags to me. Obviously, you have a lot of big dates coming up. You've got November 30th where people can exercise the sale of shares that they have been holding for now a long time. So a lot of their partners uh, can basically get out if they want to. So that is something to keep an eye on. 
Uh, December 3rd is the date where officially, you know, General Motors and, and, and Nikola can essentially walk away from that contract. And really, it's it's like a double edged sword for Nikola, right? Because they're really not getting much like financial benefit out of being associated with GM. Like GM is getting a steal. Like they're getting a stake in Nikola. They're going to be paid to produce everything. Uh, like the Badger, like Nikola is going to be paying them to produce the Badger if the Badger even comes to fruition. So really, it's it's a one-sided deal in my view. So you know, if if Nikola was to walk away from that deal, it financially it probably wouldn't be that bad for them. But here's the the, the flip side: is a lot of investors and uh, institutions saw. Nikola's partnership with General Motors is kind of a validation that Nikola is a player on like the larger automotive scale. So if that was to fall through, then it's like, okay, it's not as bad of a financial blow uh, as far as, you know, you constantly have to pay, you know, GM for, you know, building your Badger and, and all that manufacturing costs and stuff like that. But now you on the flip side, you now have uh, a lot of investor doubts as to you know if you're really a viable player on the automotive stage so it's a double-edged sword i don't really think they can win either way uh it, it, it i mean it's just kind of an ugly situation right now but definitely one to keep your eyes on definitely in saying this i'm not trying to sway your decision one way or another to buy nicola to short nicola to to like do whatever i'm just trying to give you the facts i was somebody who previously was really excited about nicola back in June and July when they were coming uh, or that when they were getting listed when they released the news about the Badger but then you know we started to get a lot of this news to trickle out where it's like hey they're not being super forthright with investors they're trying to you know they're having deceptive business practice so a lot of this stuff really is concerning and I'm just trying to highlight to you guys and I think it's really important with any company to do your research I think there's a few companies where you can just invest your money and it's like you really don't have to do any research uh, I mean, a lot of the, I mean, like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, like Coke, like these are all companies that you know what they do. Uh, I mean, there's not really much thought process behind investing uh, because these are just dominant companies and they have so much freaking cash on the balance sheet. And then and, 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 and in the respect to Amazon, I know I just like stuttered massively there. In respect to Amazon, it's like they're putting out of business every single like brick and mortar retail store there is so few companies that you can sit there and really invest your money in uh without having to think about it but definitely think before you go and invest in nicola or a company like nicola because there are a lot of questions and a lot of unknowns the last thing i want to talk about is bank earnings somebody in the comments below asked if i would touch on it briefly and in general the most important thing that you need to remember about banks is a lot of their business is driven off the current uh, rates set by the Fed. And, and it's, it's no surprise that rates have been continuously dropping. Um, we're honestly probably headed for near zero rates and the rates are gonna stay where they're at for at least another two years. The Fed has come out and said that. And what rates, rates being low does is it cuts into the margin uh, for, for banks and it also makes them a lot more picky about who they lend to because they're not getting such a nice return. Uh, they don't want to just lend to anybody. And the other thing with banks is the Fed coming out of 2008, 2009 financial crisis essentially mandates banks to have a certain amount of cash on hand uh, in, in, in case that, uh, you know, they have a bunch of loans that, that go to foreclosure and stuff like that. So. They have to keep a lot more cash on hand than they previously did maybe 10 or 20 years ago uh, to try to prevent another financial crisis or meltdown like we saw in 2008, 2009, which was uh, essentially stemmed from poor lending practices in regards to homes. So with that being said, it, me personally, I'm not looking too much to bank stocks. The only uh, reason why I was really interested in bank stocks was their dividends. Traditionally, dividends are very nice from bank stocks. Wells Fargo is one of those that paid a nice dividend. And why I say paid, as in past tense, is the Fed has actually put, well, whether it be the Fed or just the government in general, they have put a cap on the amount of dividends uh, that the banks are allowed to pay out to stakeholders. Because a lot of this stimulus money 
for you know the small business loans and stuff like that obviously it gets it gets pumped from the fed to the banks and then uh you know pumped out to the economy but the thing that they didn't want is essentially the the big banks taking that money from the fed and distributing it to their shareholders in the form of dividends so wells fargo uh like three months ago was paying a seven or eight percent dividend which was like oh my gosh that is that is awesome i'm willing to stick it out for the short term buy in get this really fat dividend uh but unfortunately now the dividends right around one or two percent because the fed came in and put a stop to that uh, so really, to me, there's no reason to sit here and buy bank stocks at this point. I don't see them going uh, like super high here in the short term. I think because rates are going to be low uh, for the next couple of years, I think you have plenty of time to wait and kind of see and feel out the bank sector in particular. The, the, the banks that did do well in the Q3 earnings were the more asset management banks. Your uh, JP Morgan, um, you know, City has been doing really good. So those would be the companies I would look to if you want to get in on the bank sector in particular, uh, because as you know, you know, with with rates so low, margins are smaller. There's no reason to invest in bonds or anything like that. So a lot of these asset management heavy banks, where they rely a lot of their earnings on asset management. Uh, they are going to be the ones to benefit the most from this, whereas your traditional just lending banks, uh, those those aren't going to be doing so hot right now just because of rates where they're at. So just one thing to think about, uh, you know, I don't know if you guys are interested in the bank sector. If you want me to talk more about banking, happy to. Um, and before we go, today in history, let me get here to it. Clarence Thomas was confirmed to the Supreme Court. So you know, we've got the, the hearings going on for uh, Amy Coney Barrett, so definitely very much in the realm of what is going on today. Uh, Clarence Thomas, I believe, is still on the Supreme Court. I'm not, I'm not up to date with every single name that is on the Supreme Court, but I'm pretty sure he is still there. So that is today's fun fact. If you learned anything in today's video, you felt it was informative, fun, exciting, spicy, controversial, whatever it is, please consider dropping a like and leaving a sub. And until next time, guys, I will see you tomorrow. Missed.